What's happening? This is Everdon, and welcome to another episode of Beats for Breakfast. Today, I am joined by Hawaii's number one podcast, the one and only Mikel Casanova of the Mikel Casanova Podcast. What's going on, man? Bro, it's, I'm doing good, man. It's good to be on the show. How you living? How's everyone doing, man? Man, I'm living good. Dude. Everyone is doing good. I... I'm loving these episodes, man. And really, I'm gonna let people know. I have you to thank because seeing you just interview different people of the of the gaming industry, the anime industry. This is lies, people. This is all lies. <laughs> I, I, ain't, I, ain't did, I ain't did nothing. I ain't did nothing. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. I would say I took inspiration. I'll say that much because I'm not. I don't. I'm not one to take credit. You know for anything it's like i do i give credit where credit is due so definitely much respect to, to the brother here this is going to be a really fun conversation because since we last spoke last year which is strange we, yeah like if you notice we've been having annual podcasts in first in around april 20 2018 <laughs> then in january 2019 and now january 2020 we're back here again <laughs> bruh yeah, so it's been a it's been a minute, it's been a minute, but this is this time, it's it's a it's an honor to have you on, and a few things have happened towards you. But before we get into that, for the people that may not know, who is Mikel Casanova? So Mikel Casanova, yeah, I'm speaking in the third person. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 basically, um, I, I'm out here in Hawaii. You no, know, from Hawaii, well, kind of, sort of. From out here in Hawaii, I basically have a podcast where I interview, you know, video game voice actors, actors, uh, different celebrities, other content creators, uh, composers, and just generally anyone who has a good conversation. I do that. I do YouTube. I review video games. I do the typical YouTuber stuff, you know, the reviewing and streaming. But my passion is in podcasting, just conversation with people and with uh streaming video games and as that's something you and i both do it's it's fun and people can can feel that energy so definitely that's that's what's up and in the fact that speaking of youtube and that's one of the things i actually wanted to go into it's mm -hmm. youtube is something that a lot of people have well more and more people are looking into as a business opportunity to go into to work full-time for themselves you are one of the few people that i've known who's been blessed with the opportunity to do youtube full-time can you tell more people about that and what's actually comes along with doing youtube full-time um i'll say this like it, if it, it's a blessing and at the same time it's kind of a curse because you're thinking <laughs> You're thinking like, oh, you know, I'm just going to quit. You know, I'm not going to have to work, you know, 40 hours a week. Yeah, you're right. It won't be 40 hours a week. It's going to be like 80, <laughs> 90. Like you're going to be like sleeping. You get a, you know, your your message alert from TubeBuddy or whatever goes off like, oh, this is trending. You know, if you're on that that side of it. But it's, um, you know, for me coming from working full time as a senior systems analyst at my old hospital to doing this has been it initially it was a bit of a struggle because it's you know you, you're so used to you had a job you told what to do you know when to do it where you need to go what you need to know but then when you go into this going into doing this full time and depending on how serious you are about it and also if you don't have a team behind you you're going to be the audio engineer the videographer you're the script writer you're the on-screen personality you got to be the same you know you're, you're literally everything. You're the, and you're the attorney. <laughs> yeah, you're the attorney. You're your publicist. You're your PR people. It, it's 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 it takes a lot, and you have to like. There can be points where you will burn out. Like there is a point. I want to say in December, I kind of burnt out because I was going heavy, and I had to take time off for my own mental well being. Because you can get it's so easy, and you know you've seen it too in this YouTube game. You can get really obsessed with like the numbers and trying to you know what's trending do i need to play this and i know smash jt has been talking about that too it's like you know you got to play this guy play it. is this still relevant but what i found is when you got that passion and it screams through to your audience which you should definitely live stream because live stream helps you you know build that relationship with your audience that i feel like pre-recorded content it can 
but there's something about that one-to-one -one interaction so like when you've established that and then you know what you want to do and you're just going forward the the best thing i can do is just like tell people enjoy what you do make content you enjoy but learn marketing aspect that's the biggest thing that i think a lot of people don't understand and it's you know learning what is the you know what is twitter and instagram and even TikTok. i know a lot of people don't care about TikTok, but TikTok is that's hot traffic right now i mean gary v talks about that all the time and linkedin so you got to know like which what each of these different sites does like if if you're on linkedin how many hashtags do you put in how do you format your your posts do you include video do you include links or do you include a picture and if you go over to twitter like a lot of people don't know if you do a twitter post you shouldn't use more than three hashtags and they need to be relevant to what you're talking about because if you don't if you go beyond three hashtags basically twitter will bury it as if it's spam and then no one's gonna see it and it's the same thing like with uh with instagram if you're on instagram and you make a post preferably video because that's how they're changing their algorithm uh, if you make a post on Instagram, don't push the hashtags in the initial posts. You want to put it underneath it. And I learned that from my boy, Chris Van Vliet. I learned it from uh, Gothic's model. Was she Gothic's TV now? Something, <laughs> whatever she is now. I learned it from her <laughs> and, uh, and uh, Ashley Kreis and Gail Level and uh, Harris Hell. I learned that from all of them. And it just, it keeps changing. And you have to be on top of it. I feel like you have to be more on top of marketing and pr aspect of it than even the content because you can make any content you want but if you can't market it you know i would it, it's like you know i had this conversation with rob Regal, and it's like youtube and the music industry are a lot of the same it's like mm -hmm. creating the actual product that's the easy part yeah a lot of people don't understand like creating the product is the easy part marketing it and con being relentless with your marketing. It's like, yeah. I think a lot of people don't want to do the heavy work of going out there and actually interacting with the people because by nature, even though we're social creatures, by mm -hmm. nature, a lot of people do not like putting themselves out there as, as hey, come check out my work. And of course you shouldn't do that. There's, there's marketing tips to, you know, you don't want to be as needy, but at the same time, the trick to not being needy is actually providing something that people want. The problem yeah. that I find on YouTube, which you have touched on this many times, is there are too many people doing what they see is successful and trying to carbon copy that rather than going into what is more so in line with their purpose and what gives them internal satisfaction. If you yeah. do what gives yourself internal satisfaction, then you are playing the game right. I was actually discussing this on the Chillcast last night and Gary V was mentioned, and I mentioned something about Gary V that if Gary V, if you're watching this, it's no shade whatsoever, but there's something about Gary V that I feel like many people don't want to acknowledge and that he is a natural salesman. And what I mean yeah. by that is you don't, being a salesman doesn't mean you're just selling products all the time. It means you are a master at selling yourself and mm -hmm. selling ideas. If you can sell yourself and sell ideas, you can sell anything. You can make you could package anything and make it sell like this is the best thing ever, which is why so many people want to be like him because he makes it look so easy. But you got to understand, he put years upon years yeah. upon years upon honing that craft to what he is. His his craft at hustling, he teaches how to hustle, but hustling for him comes easier because you hone the craft of being a better salesman and handling like a, con a conversation, which is something that you and I both know how to do really well. So being able to do these things going and not to, not to derail too far, going back to the whole oh. you going back to the whole YouTube thing. Do your thing, man. <laughs> <laughs> going back, I try to be a master of my hey, handling discussion. I try to be a master of my time too. So but going going back to the whole YouTube thing, I feel like people don't necessarily understand the value into just doing what you love and just enjoying that. 
Um, I have an episode that you guys probably see this beforehand where I discuss with Gold Chain Gamers and Sierra. It's like people love seeing people have fun. And yeah. that's that's why people love the new Bad Boys movie. Will Smith and Martin Lawrence look like they had fun making that movie. Yeah. So I definitely understand where you're, where you're coming from. And it's like we we have we wear so many different hats and I can understand why you, you could get burned out. It's like watching some, some of the last few episodes. By the way, great episode with, with Geekdom. I didn't get a chance to finish the episode with um, B-Rob yet, but the Geekdom episode was really good. Bro, I, I still can't believe I got Geekdom on there. When <laughs> I he, couldn't he either. Hit me up, I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, th- that's the thing, though, man. Like, I, I keep, like, there's so many, like, people I know, like, you know, hit me up, like, hey, I want to be a YouTuber. I want to be this. I want to be that. And I keep telling people, okay, first thing you want to do, cut out the term YouTuber, your content creator, you're creating content that people are going to consume. Is, is, is it going to be, it can be audio, it can be visual, it can be whatever. Like, okay, like you, for an example, you got the chill cast, you got the pizza breakfast, you've got how you are on Twitter, you know, how you stream and everything that is content. You're just creating content. And that's something that is it's an opportunity for a lot of people now to either be a side hustle, a side gig, a side job, or it could be their full time thing. And it's just when I tell people and sometimes I get frustrated with it and I vent about it. I campfires. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh, I, I go in on them. But it's like my problem is when people he's like, oh, I'm a YouTuber. Like I, I was telling my wife that when we went to uh, we were at Hawaii Con and She's introducing herself. And I said, stop doing that. You're content creator. Because for some people, you know, I've been speaking out about the lack of respect people have for content creators and, and YouTubers. But when a lot of people hear YouTuber, their first thought is, oh, you play on, on the Internet. So they write you off. If you say, hey, I'm, you know, I'm a creative entrepreneur. It's stuff that um, Roberto Blake. Roberto Blake says all the time, I'm a creative entrepreneur, I'm a content creator. That changes the mentality that people have when they approach you. You know, they're going to be like, oh, well, what is that? It goes from the genuine inter- It goes from the, the question of, oh, what do you do to a genuine interest? Like, what is that? You know? So, yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it's a level of maturity because really when you say that i'm a youtuber technically anybody could be a youtuber really yeah. you if you create an account and you upload videos technically by definition you're a youtuber at that point and just by saying that it's almost like hey i have a nine to five job okay <laughs> that's how people gonna look at it it's like when you say i'm a content creator then the realm is Wow, you're you you're you, you have some kind of type of creativity. What well, what do you do? Like it bring like you said, it it brings more interest. It brings more value to your name, and people mm-hmm. wouldn't want to have a deeper conversation. Oh, what is it that you do? Well, I do you know edit videos, and I also take time to um, creatively critique different forms of media. There yeah. you go, yeah. just just like that. It's almost like the the elevator conversation you you're selling yourself to know everybody whether you like it or not and that's one of the things that i've learned um not even before doing youtube thankfully before doing youtube when i had to do sales i had to learn when you enter into a new establishment every single day you are reselling yourself even if you walk into that same establishment uh, the the next day you got to sell yourself over again and I'll never forget this. One of the I'll share with you guys a story. I never shared a story with you guys before. Literally, when I had to sell um, cable and um, cable and internet, I literally walked into this uh, establishment. Right. Mm-hmm. First of all, it took me by surprise because the establishment itself was unlike any other star with like the, the counter was empty. No one was at the counter. You see things at the counter you could buy. I look to the right of me, there are two huge seats that you can just sit on, you put your feet up, had the holders and everything, and like a 70 inch TV screen, and the owner's just sitting there smoking a cigar. 
dead serious. <laughs> and I'm like, did I just walk into the man cave? <laughs> like that's literally how I felt. And I legit took my time to say, um, you mind if I join you? That was my my spiel. But you yeah. said, sure. Like I didn't join for cigar or anything, I didn't smoke or anything, but we just we just started um talking more and more. And he said, So what you got there? I said, Oh, I just he said, just files and you know, internet and stuff. I see you got the game and everything. I said, you know, you get you get much faster internet, you get even better quality HD TV by hopping over the files. I was I didn't know that. <laughs> I just felt I, it was my job to say files is better. He said, you know what? I was actually thinking about going over the files and everything. It's funny that you just walked in. I'm like, well, yo, it's just an easy setup. All you got to do is yeah. this, that, that. Boop, boop, boop. Walked out with my sale for the day. Just like that. So yeah. it's like, you got to introduce it. Now, if I was to walk in there and off the break, just, hey, I need you to get this from me instead of actually selling yourself by being more relatable and mm -hmm. just being yourself. I've noticed that was the easiest sale I ever made because I was just legit being myself. And that's something that I feel many YouTubers don't do. You put yeah. on an online personality and you are not who you are. When this camera is off or when that red light is no longer there, you are not who you say you are. And yeah. that is a big problem. Yeah. And, and, and that's, I, even you know like i noticed that once i you know people had a perception of me being the same way i am when i do my podcast versus you know how i am like in day-to-day -day life or on my you know my streams and then i just got to the point where i'm like Man, i'm just gonna be just straight shooter like the whole like campfire thing like when that just comes out and i just go into roast i'll roast myself i'll roast other folks i'll roast Man, I could be roasting the body armor train right <laughs> here. Bro, I, I'll roast anything. And I'm just like, just straight talking. And I'm shocked that that draws people. Like, people relate to that. They're like, man, I was, I would never say that, but I'm thinking that. And I'm like, well, I'm like, I'm just, because I'll talk about stuff. And I'm like, man, this is what I see when I get frustrated when people are trying so hard to be somebody else. Like, but, and, and you and I, we had that conversation so many times. We talked on, I think, on both the podcasts we we did. We were saying like, you got to put the you back in YouTube, and a lot of people don't do that. Yeah. They 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 don't get that. And it's like, if I'm gonna watch Joe Rogan, and I'm gonna watch someone who's doing the same thing as Joe Rogan, I would rather watch Joe Rogan than the other guy. So it's like Joe Rogan just does his thing. Is he the best podcaster out there? No, there are probably others, but you can see he, he just enjoys what he does. He's just him, you know, and uh, the audience is, you know, his guests is relaxed. He's relaxed. People watching it are relaxed. They have good conversations. He talks to anyone. So it's like, that's a good model. So it's like you can incorporate. And when I tell people, you can incorporate aspects of what other people do. Don't be a carbon copy, but you can take, you know, okay, that works. I might try that. This works. I might try this. I might try that. And then put your own flavor on. It's like cooking. I mean, we still need to have that cook off. I know, you know, me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> when, I, when, I, when, I, when I visit Hawaii, it's definitely going to go down. Definitely. Bruh. <laughs> but, you know, it, it's, it's like cooking, man. Like you can take a formula and that's cool but or a recipe you're not a formula a recipe and that's fine but you're gonna want to add more to it you know you want to put your own spin on it. it's like you know like soul food man everybody's grandma got a certain style everyone's mom got a certain style that's just purely you taste it you know that's their cooking that's and that you know <laughs> i get it i get it no nah, i, I want to even just add to that because it's like like you said, it's like people want the original and or people or if not the original, people want the number one thing that's in that line. Like right now, if I was to ask you, what's the number two soda? What's the number two ranked soda? It's probably going to be Pepsi. Probably. See, look, look at you. But what's number one? What's number one? <laughs> okay. Without a question. Without a question. 
<laughs> Everyone remembers number one. If we was to go, if we was to go to '90s basketball players, who's number one? Huh? Jordan. Jordan. Down. Okay, Jordan. Yeah. Now, who's number two? Oh, look at that, look, uh... look 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 what just happened. <laughs> <laughs> look what just happened. You had to think about it. If yeah. you gotta put yourself in a position where people gotta think about you for more than a few seconds associated with what you're doing, then that's a problem. Mm-hmm. You're not niching yourself down enough to be the most successful that you can be. And yeah. that's something that I feel that many YouTubers, they're okay with having the, I hate to do this, I'm not I'm not going to nobody, but since we're, we're both straight shooting right now, <laughs> There's too many people okay with having a constellation prize instead of going yes. for the gold. Yes. It's like there's too many people. And I had, fr- I literally, one of my best friends, like she really did definitely kick me into full gear, into focusing more into being more of going for the gold instead of just, well, I'll just do this, I'll just do that, I'll do that. And it's like, it's good to have people behind you like that. It's like, one thing I will say, and even towards you, even towards you, I'm sure the same for you. We mm-hmm. may not have teams, but what makes people successful is the fact that they do have people behind them. Yeah. It's like, I can understand. It's like, and I'll even say, I do have, you know what? No, I'm I'm lying. I do have different what? people who, who are teams. <laughs> I will not. I will, I will say that. I will say that. I will say that because you know what? If people take their time to really sit with you and discuss with you and make sure they're going to be with be with you through this through thick and thin to help you through your your endeavors that's a that's a teammate and i i view that as a as a uh, i view that as cold-blooded allies and mm. i could really say the chill squad the chill cast be friends associated along in that chill cast have all looked out for me so i can't say i don't necessarily have a team in terms of the marketing aspect of things in terms of the creation aspect of things where you are down in the group and you got to pull those long nighters sometimes i i I can get where you don't have a team i can get that and i've been there before but it's like i've been better these days because it's like i've had people just literally help me let go of myself and get out of my own head and i think that's one of the things that a lot of us who do content creation don't understand is getting out your own head and thinking that you know it doesn't have to be this in your head there's always a better way if what you have in your head is not bringing you the success you desire that perhaps you need to change the way you think yeah and there's there's to, to add on there's two things that I see that you do and I keep telling so many people they should do I look at your social media. You have really good branding. I Thank see you. Chill Squad. I see Beast for Breakfast. You know, people see Chillcast. I you got it's to the point your brand is spreading. You have other people you putting see, you you know, see, Chillcast. <laughs> yeah, I see, yeah, I see the like I see the I see the shirt. You know, I see the, you know the hoodie. I see the beanie. Like it's and that's the, that's such a key thing is branding like when you know like i'm using this as an example if i talk to if i talk to uh an extra revolution or if i talk to uh um uh, you know chips or if i talk to you know nick i'm still in because it's implanted in my head i'm like chill squad it's first thing that branding is is powerful Mm-hmm. And, and it's you know it, it's that thing that so many people they just miss out on it's like no create a brand like at, at a point now i got people that say oh i think of why i think of mikhail good that's what i want you to do <laughs> you know it, it's 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 that thing because when it it's that um what do they call it the it's a psychological term but i think it's like it's you said it earlier the the relatability the tangibility mm-hmm. of and when people associate something, like if someone, for instance, they see VS, right? Mm-hmm. First thing they're going to think, Victoria's Secret. Yes, people. I, that's not perfume. That's that's the that's, men's that, version. That's, that's, I get, I get. Listen, <laughs> listen. You, you don't got to sit here and defend yourself on that. Because, <laughs> li- listen, at the end of the day, if the woman of your life loves it, 
you win. <laughs> yeah. You win. <laughs> See? Say you gotta say no more. You know that I know. So yeah. you know that I know. So it's all good. But um definitely we've been talking about going full time on YouTube and I'm knowing that a lot of people are gonna benefit a lot from this. But and something else I think other people can benefit up from, you've you've been running the the Cast Over podcast for what, two and a half years now? Three years? It's been that long. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking about two and a half, three years, right? It's been around. So, yeah. See, 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 young people, you know, we're we're older. <laughs> when you're older, time just flies. When you're younger, <laughs> it, it's slow. But bam, I turned thirty-two in in, 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 a, in a few months. I, I, I met you when I was thirty. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's how much time flew, dog. And it, yeah, you say it's like annually. I was like, "What? <laughs> it's been that long?" <laughs> so that's why it's like that again. For those of you who are younger, don't underestimate having a sense of urgency, please. Yeah. But um, what are some of the what were some of like the graces and some of the challenges you've had? You know, with just podcasting in general, man. Um. Oh man. Okay, so some of the good the good things is it's helped me it's helped me get better at speech for one um i have a speech impediment and sometimes people may or may not pick up on it i stutter i stammer um there's also the fact english isn't my first language so there's that you know and i get i'm an introvert so you know by being on youtube or being on a podcast it it forces you to come out of your shell and it's just one of those situations where either you know you rise and you be about it or you sit down and i don't know it i challenge myself like every time i get in front of the mic get in front of the camera dude i'm nervous i'm so nervous but i, I fight through it you know and it's helped me get better you know at speech better at understanding different people it's, it's really good when you get to a point where you know people from all over, all over the U.S., all over the world, mm -hmm. and you get to that point where you get to see so many different perspectives. It lets you see things outside of where what you would think of something and also allows you to, you know, challenge some things you may have thought before. You know, it's very eye opening to, to talk to someone like, you know, we've got you know, viewers, supporters, and friends in the UK, you know, seeing things from their perspective or people in Japan or people, you know, in Korea, wherever it, it's, it's eye opening. You know, you get to see different things and, and hear their opinions and how they view just stuff. And it's, that's one of the pros. I mean, it's allowed me, you know, to network, which is the biggest thing is the network, you know, with, the different voice actors and the different game company folks and that opens doors like the the amount of doors that have been opened because of podcasting has been astronomical and a lot of people which even recently uh, i don't think i i've i can't believe we don't we haven't talked this long but um i i've had a lot of people recently tell me that i should just drop the podcast and i'm over here like why would i do that when <laughs> that that's allowed me to do so much i'm like so but and then as far as the challenges um the, the challenges are you know we were talking about this before we went live the editing process that in itself especially when you're doing video you're doing audio as well and you've got to do the promotion of it how are you going to make the clips to put on Twitter, to put on Instagram? You now, are you going to have a fade in, fade out type of thing going? Um, what is the right clip to use so that you showcase yourself and your guests in the best light? Because if you put out something too spicy, that's, you know, if it's in a podcast, if it's in a conversation and it gets to that point, and if that's what you put out first, that could be like a bad look. You got to look out for yourself and your guests. 
And then um, there's there's the detractors. There's a lot. There's a lot of people that can be detractors, and it's something I've been speaking out against a lot lately. And I'm catching a lot of flack for it. But one of the things I've noticed is that where you're from, and typically with people you know, um, like I use the case in point for me, I'm in Hawaii. A lot of people here dislike that I say, oh, I'm Hawaii's number one podcast. Even though statistically it's factual. A lot of people take issue with that. And I get more love and support from people like you, you know, Gamer Thumb TV, people all over, you know, that I, I've met on this content creation journey. And my mom, my mom is my biggest supporter. Well, and my wife, I, I need to say that. Yeah. My wife too. <laughs> <laughs> oh Almost, man. I didn't forget that. But, you know, aside from them, aside from you guys, I don't have that support out here. You know, I um, I keep being told all you do is video games. All you post about is video games. All you tweet about, all you share. And that's not true. You know, I've had other content. And at one point, the only content I was putting out was my podcast. But you get people who is it is do it's Especially when you go full time as a podcaster or as a content creator in general, you'll have people that will uh, it it upsets me, but it you'll have people that will be like, "What do you do? Oh, you just sit and just play video games. Oh, you just sit behind a mic and talk. There's nothing. Anything you do is not important." And then when you explain everything to them, video editing, audio editing, all that, they still write you off. But if it's like, as an example, out here, you got a lot of local celebrities, The Rock, uh, Jason Momoa, uh, Bruno Mars. <clears throat> if they put out a tweet or post or whatever, people will just scroll, like, scroll, like, scroll, like, there's no thought. No effort. If you do the same, and I'm not saying everyone's like this, but majority, you do that. Those same people that would do it for a celebrity won't do it for you. And I question that, and I've been vocally questioning it, and I've gotten two responses. One response I've gotten from other creators was that I go through that same thing with people where I'm from. I was going to comment on that, actually. <laughs> I was going to say that's a content creation thing. No matter where you go, hometown support has been an, a wide issue for content creators for years. Yeah. Um, even for the longest time, um, Wale, rapper, he didn't get mm -hmm. the biggest support. Like he did get supported. Like I'll, I'll say, one of the few people that I did know, I, I do know who, who was always an avid um, Wallace supporter is Rob Regal. But there's been a lot of other people who I have witnessed and because I've hung around people from the DMV area. Mm -hmm. They said no one was really rocking with Wale like that until after he got Blue big yeah. across seas. And it's usually that's the same thing. You could even you, there's so many different things with that. Like hometown is where people don't want to accept you it's like even yeah. if you were to go if you were to go there's so many different levels you can go with that uh you can go on that with rappers almost a lot of rappers get killed in their own hometowns mm -hmm. um not to even be even religious but like jesus was rejected in his own hometown right so it's <laughs> like there's is it like a prophet without <laughs> he has no honor where he's yeah it's, it's, so it's there's so many different things about just hometowns that you won't get that respect. So it's I get it. I'm just showing. I'm just letting you, I'm sharing those examples to show you that. No, I no, understand. no, no. That's good. It's good. It's good. I understand that uh, really well. That it's it can be tough, but it's like you can't let that distract you. You can't let that even get too much into your skin because 
at the end of the day, yeah. one of the, I, the David Drayton, shout out to him. First person I had on here, he's a reseller. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that he said that was a gem was, I always focus on the person who's willing to buy what I want to buy. He's a reseller. Mm -hmm. He says, I focus on the ones who want to buy what I'm selling. There's going to be a whole bunch of people who don't want to buy what I'm selling. That's none of my business. If I was to worry about what they had to say or think, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be in business right now. Mm -hmm. And I feel like when you're a content creator, you're in the business of selling yourself consistently. So if these people from your hometown don't want what you had to sell, focus on everyone else who's going to appreciate your time and yeah. make the best content for them. And make even better for them, and make and better for them, and better for them, and better for them, until for the people from your whole town, hometown are like, you know what? He's not even paying us attention anymore. Let me go and check check in on him. And then when they check in on you, then it's like, oh crap, I made a mistake. <laughs> so it's like you. That's that's a that's a to me what I'm learning a, an effective way of handling things because it's like. You got family sometimes who may not support what you got it, what you're doing. Yeah. You got friends probably who've been rocking with you for a long time who may not support what you're doing. But you will always have people and strangers and people who are unbiased support what you're doing. And to me, that's a that's a beautiful blessing. Yeah. I, I told you about the dude who I known for like ten years, and he asked me for. Did I tell you about the Best Buy story? Bruh. So this dude, I've known for 10 years. And this happened last year sometime. He wanted me. Like I went with him. He's like, yeah, can we look at you know some computers? I want to get into content creation, streaming, and whatnot. I was like, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll you know, I'll rock with you. Let, let's go. Let's go. So we went to the best spot on the other side of town. And went in there. I was like, you know, what are you trying to do? You know that you're like, you know, you want this graphics card, you want this type of monitor, you want, you know, whatever your setup is. So we're looking at that and he's telling me what he wanted to do. So I'm, you know, putting it all in the cart, putting everything together. And we go to the checkout line. Go to the checkout line. I'm trying to be respectful because I'm this is not a campfire. I can't say what I want to say. This guy, I'm gonna use this. This guy. I know what you're gonna say. That's the bad part. <laughs> Bruh. This dude was like, You're buying it for me, right? I knew that I I, I didn't want to believe that, but I felt that's that's where it was going. My wife was with me. She was with us the whole time. She looked in disbelief. She's like, are you serious? He's like, well, yeah. He's like, well, he's been doing his YouTube thing and podcasting. He's got the money. Why not? And I was like, wait, are you I'm like, you can't be serious. He's like, yeah, you remember like you borrowed like $12 from me like 10 years ago. So I'm just adding on interest and everything. I'm like, are you joking? He's like, no, I. you, you should get this for me. You owe me. I'm not joking. <laughs> Yo, hold up, hold up, hold up. Where's where's my calendar? Today's April first. <laughs> Today is April first. There is no way that is a true story. No, bruh. So wh where is Fat Joe? No, you lied to me. This ain't a true story. No. <laughs> <laughs> what? My wife had to pull me out of the store. She had to pull me out of Best Buy. I was about. To, she's like, nope. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I have not spoke to that dude since. Blocked him you. on everything. I don't blame and, and, you. And, and, and that's like one of the things like you get people like detractors. That that's a detractor. Yeah. Like you, you get you get people like that and you know, I mean you know, like as a YouTuber, if you get codes or if you you know you start working some people come out the woodwork. And it's like people have different approaches. Some will be cool with you. Some will try to finesse you. And it just gets to a point. And, and that's one of the things, too, when you you do this and I've seen some people do it. And it's why I tell I tell people 
sometimes you gotta take a break for yourself because you can get paranoid after a while with how people come at you Mm -hmm. so but that was the biggest point i was just like bird that's how you feel (laughs) (laughs) that's the best way you read that that's how you feel (laughs) all this like in my head i'm over here like whose man is this and then then i'm like oh yeah my guy that's my guy <laughs> and, and it's like you you you, you, you look ashamed of yourself for a second it's like is that really my right i i feel you well everyone i i hope you guys are are taken from this because this is these are these are real true things that could really happen and it's not to scare you into not doing your own your own thing but it's to give you an idea of what content creators go through behind the scenes? I know people go through a lot of just editing from computers crashing down, the computers yeah. not turning back on, to losing three hours work of work of editing because things are not working the way you desire. There's so many different things that come along with that. But um, that, happened, that happened to me last night, bro. My ah. Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot review at everything, and it Premiere crash didn't say nothing. Took me a week to make that. I'm over here like, can I just put my written review up? <laughs> Listen, I feel you. I feel you. But um, we got we're gonna go ahead and take a small break. We're gonna show you guys a clip from one of Bakel's Casanova podcast videos. Stay tuned. You know, the argument will always be around forever that you know wrestling's fake. Of course it's fake. You're watching a TV show, you know? <laughs> no one goes, I can't believe you watch Game of Thrones. You know it's fake, right? Of course it's fake. <laughs> no one leaves Hamilton on Broadway and goes, yeah, that was cool, but uh, you know it's fake. Hamilton's uh, not alive. And that guy that was on stage pretending to be Hamilton, not actually him. Yeah, like uh, we get it. <laughs> And that's one of the things too. Like I, I, I remember a lot of people, especially during like the nineties, like, oh, well, wrestling's fake. It's fake. You know, why are you watching that? It's like, okay, you watch was it CSI, uh, whatever, or whatever TV show it was it Law and Order and ER? That's fake. <laughs> like, yes, let somebody enjoy exactly. what they let them exactly. enjoy what they want to enjoy. I think that argument needs to finally die. <laughs> like, I, I'm just happy that wrestlers are not getting as badly hurt now as they were back then you know in the 90s well they've been taking a lot of uh, precautions like there's a lot of banned moves now because of how bad concussions got but um you know it's not talked about a lot but well, with what happened with chris benoit it was you know now been basically deleted from what you know all the wwe history books i think that wwe took a big hit there with uh you know concussions and uh, their wellness program, and I think that they really started to change things up. I believe that was 2007 when that happened. So they really yeah. started to change things up from there. And, um, you know, you don't see those moves now where people are being dropped on their heads. You know, you have some of the purists that are upset saying, oh, well, wrestling needs to be this way. They need to go back to doing this. And it's like there's a reason that they're doing what they're doing now. And well, and, and this also goes back to they don't have competition. So if WWE does things the way they're doing things, they're going to do things that way. And there's nothing that we can say about it. And true, you know, if AEW is going to provide a you know different product out there, or you know, Ring of Honor or TNA. Welcome back. Hope you guys enjoyed that commercial break. And this has been a really fun podcast. Even as I'm sitting here talking with you, man, I've been gaining a lot just by talking with you. But um, oh, he knew this already. <laughs> he knew all this already, <laughs> bro, bro. But it's like, even though this is the information that I know, it's like it's good to it's good to hear different things over again because it's like sometimes even though we know different things, we all to forget. And social media these days has just been. Honestly, if you have seen, I've been uh. <laughs> I've been taking my time a little bit more off social media. I've been branding my social media differently as thank you for putting that out there because I've been changing how I've been using social media. And mm. 
social media these days is more about like i need this now i need this now i need this now or whatever's trending or cancel this cancel that or let's go after this because everyone is going after or the huge mob mentality and i wanted to just really wanted your take on this do you believe social media influences gaming culture now yeah it does it's um it and i think it's because like you and i we come from before the social media Mm -hmm. and it honestly before internet was everywhere so it in our day for you young people yes we're revealing our ages in our day um when we got a game it was either birthday or christmas yep one of the two yeah you had that one or two if you're lucky you got a couple games and that was holding you over unless the game went on sale you know what i'll say this i'll say <laughs> this you know what? let's really show show my age the one time you would probably get another game outside of that you had to really 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 kill it on your report card and i mean really kill it <laughs> i'm talking about not just on one report card but all four quarters and it was summertime came around if you had a good year in school then maybe not all the time yep. maybe you could get a game and the only reason why i'm mentioning that is shout out to moms she got me star fox with the rumble pack included that year i did that bro you remember the back when like going to chuck e cheese or something like that or so bro like you Man. had to have been I, super good i was, I was <laughs> y'all may be too young to remember this i was a discovery zone kid bro <laughs> no, i remember that joint <laughs> i was a discovery bro. zone kid i was never a chuck e cheese kid i was always a discovery zone kid Bruh, that's that was like heaven for kids back in the day. It All was. the slides, the, the obstacle course stuff. Yes. To what you just to the point that you're you're hammering on. I feel like you have a lot of people who just enter in social media and it's it's a lot of people who are comfortable with sharing their opinions more through texting than verbally. And if because most people haven't gotten to that place where you can't comfortably say the things you want verbally they don't see the consequence behind texting things like me to this day i don't text recklessly because my whole thing is i always ask myself would i say this to this person's face like this in that tone that's just the way i've i've been growing up it's not a matter of always ready to fight people and everything but it's also it's just a matter of respect it's a matter of being able to would I talk to this person or would I talk down to somebody just because they're not in front of me? Yeah. And these are things you got to consider. You got to consider it's like, what is your tone? And the reason why I go into gaming culture is because, and this kind of ties into the next question I asked you with entitled gamers or just more generational gamers. I've never seen gamers complain about, no, excuse me. Let me, let me rephrase my question. I never no, seen, no, no, no. Keep it there. Keep it there. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm going to rephrase my question to something, to something a little bit. I'm going to, I'm going to get a little bit more real. I never yeah. seen grown men and women, grown men and women, adults get mad and argue and fight and bicker over video games as much as I've done in these, in this, this generation of video games and previous, like this, this past generation of video games. I've never seen grown adults get to the point where you are verbally attacking other adults, but not sharing your opinion, for verbally attacking other adults for being excited for something, for verbally attacking other adults for being against something that's being implemented in video games. I've never seen it, and it's it's bothersome, and I only see it on social media. So I would like your thoughts on this, man, because I'm, no, I, yeah. No, I do, I fully, I fully agree with you, because I feel like we didn't have that when we grew up. Like, mm-hmm. when we, adults didn't do it and maybe it's because people thought gaming was a you know a kid thing but you know like this whole generation now like oh you know this whole generation and i'll say this xbox this current gen has been trash like the way they marketed it if phil is has slowly turned it around but the brand's been damaged with how it, it they, they went this generation so a lot of people I've seen people say, oh, if you buy the Xbox and you must be mentally damaged or, or stuff like this. And I'm like, why is it got to be to that extreme? 
exactly. You know, like it ain't that serious, my guy. Like, come on. Like, if if you like PlayStation, and I mean, we get talk about the Sony ponies because there's a lot of them. I mean, there's the Nintendo only folks too. But my thing is, are we like plot? Like, we prefer piece of a piece of plastic are we gamers because gamers play games if it's on pc it's on the switch if it's on xbox or playstation if we got it we'll play it if we really want to play it we'll go out and get the platform it's on but i feel like gamers now especially with social media bro like okay let's step into delorean and go back in the day let's go back to the 90s okay People now talk about platform or or the console wars. I'm sorry. If you weren't there for Sega and Nintendo going back and forth, you don't know what it is. If you weren't there when Aladdin on the Genesis and Aladdin on the Super Nintendo. Or Maxim Carnage or the Super NES and the Genesis. Or Mortal Kombat 2 on the Genesis or the Super NES. Come on. Come on games back then it was very rare to get the same experience on different platforms right now this is the best time to be a gamer because it doesn't matter if you got you're playing on the switch or a playstation or xbox or pc you got choice you can get the same experience based on what you're comfortable playing it on we didn't have that growing up but you have a whole you know with social media a game will come out and before people even play it, oh, it's trash. They'll kill. And, and, and I've learned this from talking to people in the gaming industry. Like you got people who their whole livelihood is based on does this game, you know, work functionally? Does this, you know, play well? Does it look good? And then you could take some random Joe Schmo on Twitter, put out a, a tweet and just people will bandwagon onto it and kill the game or you get really good games like astral chain that come out i i'm just saying games like astral chain which should have been game of the year thank you which should have been game of the year thank you and within a month if you're still playing it they're like why are you playing that old game you you know what you touched on something that a lot of people don't necessarily understand. You said it's the, the best time to be a gamer, mm-hmm. right? Yep. There are so many gamers that have more than one console to play these games on. Yes. And the thing about it is there are old lyrics that come to my mind and you know what lyrics I'm all about to say. I think you know what to say. Mm-hmm. Super Nintendo, Nintendo Sega, Sega Genesis. Genesis. <laughs> when I was dead broke, man, I couldn't picture this. Lines of the great Christopher Wallace, Biggie Smalls. Yes, I'm saying Biggie Smalls because that's who he was when I was growing up. <laughs> <laughs> Notorious B.I.G. for those of you who or who are too big and don't know is Notorious B.I.G. is Biggie, which don't know that. Shame on you. Um, <laughs> the whole thing about it is People don't understand that growing up, having Sega and having Genesis, I mean, having Sega, having Genesis and Super NES, my bad, in the same household was rare. And Super. I was Super in that, rare. I was in that rarity. I was in that rarity. I will admit, I was You had rare. both. But you know what? Guess what? I had siblings and one wasn't mine. <laughs> I had yeah. siblings and one wasn't mine. I, my brother, his was the Genesis. Mm-hmm. My mother, which my first console that was mine was the Super NES. Mm-hmm. But I grew up playing Genesis first. I grew up playing Sonic first. I grew up playing Alex Kidd, Quackshot, uh, Hyperstone Heist. Back Quackshot and Hyperstone Heist were my first two games. Mm-hmm. And it's like so i know i could tell you the difference between playing on the sega genesis and a super nes the only thing about the main difference was just really the sound the music the ost of the video games which 
I had this conversation with, you know, for you guys are watching now, the previous episode with RG, RGT85, we talked about that. And that was like the biggest thing. Like the Super NES was going really for the live feel where the Genesis stayed with sounding more like a video game. And we both agreed it's like, depending on the game, sounded more like a video game sounded better for a lot yeah. of those games. And going back into this, I, I look at people who play, who have a PS4, they have a Switch, they have a PC, and they have an Xbox One. And y'all still complaining that Nintendo's not doing this, Sony's not doing this, Xbox not doing this. And I'm like, how dare you? If you have a supercomputer and a PS4, you shouldn't be, you should not be critiquing what another company is doing, especially if you have no stock in that company, you have no investments in that company, you are not doing anything to financially support that company. <clears throat> you need to shut up, straight up. Yes. Yeah. That's that's just my honest take on that. Bro, so. it, it, it's like with people that are upset about, you know, it, and. I, I get I, I understand the irritation with Capcom with how you got one game on the cart, one on download. That's irritating. I agree with that. Or with the fact that it's an older title at a premium. I get it. At the same time, I'm looking at it from the business perspective and it's like we don't know if we put this on the Switch if they're actually going to buy it. Like I've been talking um, with some folks, Kathy Cackley and others uh, at Capcom. And the thing is, they really don't know if the audience for the Switch are going to buy it. Because the audience for the Switch and the audience for the Wii U and the audience for the Wii is wildly different. different. Wildly different, yeah. Because they had bangers on Wii and then they came back with Wii U. People didn't care. So now it's like with a Switch, it's like, okay, yeah, we got the Devil May Cry games. They don't know if the audience will buy it. And it, I get it. Yeah, maybe it should be $10. I, I agree. It should be cheaper. But they still have to make a profit. You you, you, you mentioned Capcom. And I, you're right. They do have to make a profit. I feel as though... Devil May Cry games are it's cool that they went that route. But I feel like there's a there's a there's a game on the Wii that I felt like that they should have brought over to the Switch. That this game is not talked about much, but everyone who played it always loved it. Tats Noku versus Capcom. That <laughs> you see? <laughs> and I know you're looking at it, it's like, dang, it's like yeah, I, I bought that it's, game it's, up. It's hard to come by, too. It's <laughs> I, super hard to come I, by. I bought that game up. I bought that game up. That is the new That is the new Marvel vs. Capcom 2, in my opinion, where, it's, where yeah. a game's hard to come by. I feel as though bringing those games to the Switch, because Blaze Blue does, a, it does well on the Switch. A lot of people, there's a, there's a community that loves those, those types of games, like Blaze Blue mm -hmm. and Guilty Gear. I feel Capcom should take advantage of that and see, you know what? People like these types of games. Marvel vs. Capcom 2 or Tatsunoko vs. Tatsuno Capcom would be pretty good in, in my in my opinion on that. I think, and 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 actually, I, I'm glad you brought that up because I know with the Tatsunoko vs. Capcom, they do have a strong interest in bringing that. Uh, there is, um, and I'm under NDA for a lot of stuff, which, yes, I, I got to help out with Resident Evil 3. I, I can talk about that. That's why Capcom was out here in Hawaii last year. Um, Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. Did 2020 and 2021, Capcom has a lot in store. That's all I can say. Um, let's just say a certain Regina is coming back. So, um, you know, with dinosaurs. I'm not. I'm, not, I'm, just kidding, I'm being. Listen, I'm. I'm being quiet. So you, when you get out, give out those hints, I'm sitting here like, I heard nothing. So, so <laughs> like, bro. So I know there's a versus collection coming. You know, that's. I, I think I was talking about that a lot last year. So 
that's kind of, I know that's in the pipeline. The biggest thing is just with them getting the licenses, you know, with the whole uh, Disney Fox thing going on with Marvel. But with Tatsunoko, I know they want to do that. It's just they're having a hell of a time with Japan and the very like it, we're lucky we even got that game. Yeah. It was so a they, fantastic game on the, on, on the Wii. Ooh, I, I, I might be the minority saying this. I thought Tatsunoku was better than Marvel vs. Capcom 3. I agree, actually. I said it back then. <laughs> I said it back then. I, I played both at the same time. And I said, I said, Tatsunoku vs. Capcom is actually better than and Marvel vs. Capcom 3. I felt like Marvel vs. Capcom 3 lost, it lost the flavor of what made Marvel vs. Capcom yeah. into its... So- I want you guys to understand that I have a love and hate relationship with Smash Ultimate. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that's not a good sign of I'm coughing before I'm saying this. But Smash Ultimate, in my opinion, they are flirting with the line of Marvel vs. Capcom 2 territory, where you create something so great that if you do create an installment after this, you can't follow up. That's what I feel is the case with Marvel. Like, Smash Ultimate, the way they're doing this now, in my opinion, this should be the last Smash Brothers. Yeah, it, it they don't need to touch it after this because you, you're you right. It, this is like trying, you know, like... This is like Rush Hour 1, Rush Hour 2. Mm-hmm. Great movies. Then you come back with Rush Hour 3 and you're like, eh... I... It's like it's it's not it's not bad, but <sighs> see, yeah. and I know a lot of people are upset with the whole Byleth thing. Which Byleth to me looks cool. I get the disappointment, but if you look at the history, and I've been saying this to to people in my Discord and whatnot, when it comes to Smash and Fire Emblem, Fire Emblem has always been promoted with smash always roy didn't even have a game when melee came out he didn't. it's a promotional thing and and people say oh it's to me to me sword character some people are like oh we want uh a minecraft character and all this i'm like no smash is kind of like in essence smash is kind of like the video game hall of fame in a way and I don't know, like, can they top that going for it? I don't think so. I don't think it'll be wise. I think you, I, I think you should just some things should be left great as what they are. It's like to this day, I still feel like Mortal Kombat Ultimate should just stop there. Like Mortal Kombat Ultimate is probably one of my favorites out of the Mortal Kombat games. I lost interest. Hmm. After they started doing Deadly Alliance Five, Mortal Kombat, uh, what? oh the different fighting stuff. Oh my god! And then they, they came back with Mortal Kombat Ten, and I felt like there was just so much emphasis on the gory aspect of things. It's like, yeah, you, you, you're, you're modern. You're, you're making more of a more modern version of what we played it as as kids, but it's it's just not the same. It's just like, I felt like Mortal Kombat back then just had more of a, it had more of its own fighting style. It's like Killer Instinct is to me is still, Killer Instinct is still running good. I would say Killer Instinct coming back was good, but yeah. it's not holding a candle to the Street Fighters, in my opinion. It's not holding a candle to even the Tekken series. Tekken, in my opinion, is like one of the few that really evolved well over time, despite their loading times on the PlayStation 4. Uh, <laughs> Tekken is like one of the few games that I would say has definitely increased. I want to play Tekken again and Soul Calibur. I need to do that. I mean, you saw the announcement with Soul Calibur? No, I have not seen the announcement with Soul Calibur. What did I miss? Ooh. Um... The main guy from Samurai Showdown is a new character. Uh, wasn't it Haomaru? Bruh. Yes. I saw that. I'm like, okay, time to dust off the sticks. <laughs> Listen, man. I I have I have uh, two mains in Soul Calibur. Mm-hmm. Boldo 
and Mr. I hate Ruby. that character. <laughs> Everyone hates him. Everyone hates him. Yes, I, I'm, I'm that guy to bring back comebacks out of nowhere with him. Right. It's, it's, it's been done multiple occasions. Uh, this is just us just messing around at the point, but for, <laughs> for Chips, for, for Chips, who's probably watched this episode, for those of you who know Chips and Sticks and everything, not in Soul Calibur. See, he watched me uh, get my behind handed to me in Soul Calibur when I was uh, at um at Too Many Games. Hmm. But, no, that was at um Long Island Retro. But at Too Many Games, he was talking a lot about in, in Tekken. So we had they had Tekken 3 there on the sticks, and he wasn't seeing my Hawaiian. Well, wow. he 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 didn't he didn't even, he he got one round, but he didn't get one match in at all. We played like three or four, maybe five matches. Uh, you know, you know, it's crazy. So um, when WWE came out here, Xavier Woods, I got to hang out with him. Nice. Is uh, he came to our local joint uh, where we have like tournaments and whatnot? So Video Gamers Hawaii or VGTO8, we have a uh, every week they're throwing tournaments. So Smash, Street Fighter, Soul Calibur, Tekken, all of it. So Xavier Woods came, he hung out, and he's good at Soul Calibur, bruh. Me and him were going back to back. Nice. Finally, I had to switch it up because I I'm a Maxi main. The thing about Maxi is he only once he starts, he just goes straight. You if you sidestep, screw. Yeah. So I switched up to you, right. So like I switched up to Kalik, and. I was able to get so we did a we did a mirror match and then he went with his main his main is um is uh Siegfried and I'm so glad that uh Kalik has that where he puts the staff up like that and he counters man he was Xavier Woods is a headhunter with with Siegfried man he I'm lucky I, I know people who are <laughs> but before we before we have too much fun with you guys, we're gonna go ahead and go for a quick commercial break. Hope you guys enjoy another commercial, another segment from Mikel Casanova, the Casanova Podcast. Stay tuned. Send me the joint because I'm about to go ahead and check that out. Yeah, I sent it on um on uh Twitter. Oh, okay, there it is. Hold up. I'm about to watch this right now. I'm, I'm waiting for that reaction. I can't believe they got dude in this game. Oh my god, they got the original music. I peeped that. <laughs> oh my goodness. You can tell that I was a Genesis kid because I know that. And he's fighting Mr. Rugi. Oh my goodness. Oh my god. Bruh. 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 I know. Go. 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 I'm gonna play it on PC. I got as long as I can use this controller, the Switch Pro controller, I'm good. Okay. I got it on. Um, I well, I have it on PlayStation 4 and PC, but I mainly just play on PC because the loading times. And, man, it's it's so good. I it's a shame that people kind of wrote off Soul Calibur 6. Yo, with y I'm going to. This is just a small heads up. This is going to be including our commercial break. I might just have a segment of my reaction to Soul Calibur Six. Do it. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, going be, it's going to show both of our reactions and everything. I'm going to have the window just dead set. I'm I'm going to do that. I'm going to do the editing for that. That's gonna that's gonna be one of the commercial breaks that's going to happen. Welcome back. We are back with the final segment of Beats for Breakfast. Hope you guys are enjoying yourselves. Uh, this show is running a little bit longer today, but you guys have seen um, the previous episodes with Mikel and myself. This is tame compared to how far we took. We usually go Bruh. two and a half, three hours easy, and we'll probably be able to just a little bit over half that for this episode. 
or probably just about half that. So we thank you guys for taking your time to watch. We hope the information that is shared with you is valuable, but we, I don't want to take away from things from being organic for the sake of keeping to a time clock. So just a little over for this episode. But um, yep. Mikel, man, um, we were just talking a little bit before um during the break about you know Final Fantasy VII remake, and it's to me I brought up to to you, and I just want you know more of your thoughts on this. It's gaming music is something that we've grew, grew up with. You know, yep. we remember iconic soundtracks from Sonic Three, Streets of Rage, even going into the original Final Fantasy VII, going into even um. Ready to Rumble on Dreamcast, Fantasy Star Online. All these games had iconic soundtracks. And more so we look at games these days, their soundtracks, I think people call them really good. But I heard people say Red Dead Redemption had a really good soundtrack. I didn't see the um, hype there. <laughs> I didn't either. I'm like... <laughs> to each his own. But... Mm. The one thing that caught my interest with Final Fantasy VII Remake was the music. And it didn't hit me, hit me. Not the demo, not the demo that got played, because the demo, you know, it's it still got me hyped, but when it really hit me was Game Awards. And I heard that battle theme. Mm. I played back that demo, I mean, that, um, in, that trailer about five, 10 different times. After saying that, all right, dun, dun, dun. I'm like, okay, I need to get this game down. I need to get this game down. I said, please let them play this every time I go into battle. So I just want your thoughts on like the state of gaming music as of today. Is it getting better? Is it something that is a hit or a miss? Like, what are your thoughts on this? I, I honestly think it's getting better. Um, with especially with Final Fantasy VII remake, what I was shocked to find is they brought back the original composer Nobuo uh, Nobuo Uematsu, and I was like, he made this. Like, I one of my friends actually has a rip of majority of the OST, and she just kept sending it to me. I was listening to it, and I was like, what? He's sampling hip hop. He's sampling EDM. He's sampling rock. Like. And even can pull off country. I'm like, this is, and that's the thing when it comes to like gaming music composers. And I don't think a lot of them get the respect that they deserve. They but they, there are some that are just iconic. I mean, if you think of Streets of Rage, you're thinking Yuzo Koshiro. That guy, it's mind blowing. Of Rage too. Mind blowing work he did. Uh, yeah. Back, level, I think, was it Stage Seven? That, was the, the tr that track was called "Back to the Industry." Iconic mm -hmm. track, yeah. For Sheets of Rage too. So, dang man. So, yeah, I feel you. <laughs> I feel you. <laughs> it, it's getting better, and it's. It, I think the biggest thing is the fact that it's it's getting to a point now where the they're not. Well, it, it, it's good and bad at the same time. It's good because you have people coming in without having to deal with the limitations. They can just if they think it or you know they can play it in their head and they can produce it but you know some folks don't really push above that but when you got people like nobuo or yuzo koshiro or uh yuchira yamane from castlevania like when you got people who had those limitations from the nes from the genesis from the super nintendo hell even the original uh playstation and you put them in the, in the environment now with no restraints that creativity is just it's rough. through the roof it's through the <laughs> roof and i feel like a lot of people don't necessarily they they take that for granted it's like you look at old iconic tracks like i would say from this generation of games i would really give my salute to the indie developers yeah. Um, quick shout out to Chipper Crit, who I had on here. He was the Earth Knight composer. He composed. You played Earth Knight on PC or Switch? Yeah, yeah. The lead composer of that. Um, got a chance to interview him, and he would even tell you himself. It's like what goes into their creation process. It took seven years to make that game. Wow. 
A lot of people don't 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 get that. It takes a long time to make some of these games, or several years. Like it takes a long time to make these games. So it's like I think people don't like you said. People don't really give these composers the credit that they deserve. The composer to um, Monster Boy, that was a fantastic Whoa. soundtrack. <laughs> Easily one of my favorite soundtracks that I've heard in this generation. I can't name what was the bad thing about that game from graphics, gameplay. I gave I gave that game a, I gave that game. You know what I said? I think I gave that game either nine. I gave that game a ten. I said it's it's really where it is. Like I did a huge review for that game. It's easily one of my favorite re- reviews that I've ever ever done. The soundtrack was easily one of my favorite things of the game. Yeah. So I, it's like it's those types of games that I like playing. But um, yeah. I'm going to be honest with you, and we're going to kind of like take this into kind of like where we were at the beginning of the conversation. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be real with you. Um, there are some days that I just want to in- immerse myself into playing a video game without having to talk about it, without having to stream yeah. it, without having to review it, without having to feel like I had to give my thoughts about it to everybody. Like, <laughs> like there are oh. days, <laughs> there are days that I just, quite frankly, I don't care about the gaming news. I just want to play the video game. And yeah. the Chill Cast, shout out to the, to the members of the Chill Cast. You guys know this about me very well, that there are days that even though every week I will talk about the Chill Cast, I'll talk about gaming news in the Chill Cast, I'm even changing up the rubric because... I'm finding myself not even caring about the the trending news like you know and i mentioned her a, a lot but shout out to really leo on this because my my hunger really put out a huge set of questions for us to really ask on the on the chill cast it was stuff that people don't really talk about like gamers with disabilities and stuff like that and i'm like yo this is stuff that we could really talk about like last night on the chill cast we went from talking about um, gamers in the toxic community, like, you know, with Pokemon and everything. And then we kind of segued into gatekeeping in video games. And to me, that was a much better topic. We were able to talk about gatekeeping in everything, gatekeeping in music, gatekeeping in movies. And uh, I had the Stewie Griffin, I used a bottle this time, you're the old man on the porch with your cane, waving your your cane at everyone on the porch, saying, "That's not how you do it, youngsters." And it's like, it's like a lot of older folks coming down at people, or a lot of people who have more quote unquote experience, and not exactly taking the time to address that gatekeeping aspect. And I just, I, 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 yeah. I can think of someone that is it that tweet that tweet that that one guy. Was it, um, not James Roth, but the other guy. Because that was the, the one who said something like, if you didn't play it without safe states and all this other stuff. Oh, that tweet. Bruh. Like, I, I get his point, but at the same time, it's like, really? If you beat the game, you beat the game. Bingo. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's kind of why I'm, that's kind of why I'm mad with this. I was, I want to, you know, just kind of get your thoughts on this. Like, do you ever get to that point where it's like, you just get tired of all the fluff and the drama around video games? By your expression, I'm assuming you have, but you just, you just want to play the video games. Like, you don't want to feel like... Oh, I'm looking crap. for my copy of Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. I'm like, where is it? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, that's the one I want to pull up because I don't want to stream it no more. Dude, I, I'm right there with you because when it comes to... Dude, there's so many... like. When it comes to games now, like again, this is me and us. We're showing our age, man. Back in the day, man, growing up, gaming was like an event. It was so fun. It was a great pastime. It still is. I'm not trying to say it's not. But as you get older, and especially with folks on social media not checking what they're saying, just wilding out, you know, with their yeah. thumbs and their 240 characters. Oh, they just you start seeing all the negativity around it. You see the gatekeeping, you see people complaining about some of the most baseless stuff. I mean, some stuff granted, you know, DLC practices. Yes. You know, vote with your wallet, but speak out about it because 
it's not you shouldn't have to and that's one of my issues with the soul kingdom hearts 3 you mean tell me i paid 80 dollars you mean movie hearts 3 movie hearts 3 <laughs> you know you pay like you know 80 dollars for the complete and then you still got to pay 30 bucks to get the actual freaking ending are you serious like that kind of stuff yes yeah, speak out about it but you got people just you know so negative about gaming and then with the gaming news oh sony's doomed or nintendo's doomed they gotta do this they gotta do that and i'm an armchair analyst you know people have that mentality and for me bro i tune out i'm, I'm just i get so so tired of it i'm like i just want to either i want to just play a game in peace not you know not streaming not talking about it like you were saying or I just tune out from the social media and I just like, I just want to just be by myself. Like with Pokemon, I know people were expecting me to stream it. My wife's been streaming it a lot and she beat it on stream and that's cool. But for me, in my discord, there are some people going back and forth about how Pokemon company did wrong and he did this, he did that. And I'm over here like, I'm just playing the game and I don't care about none of that. The game's fun. A lot of fun. <laughs> no. Nah, so. I, get it. I get it. Like what, especially with the issue of Pokemon. Like people had an issue to match what you're saying to kind of parallel this with the um, Kingdom Hearts comment. People were talking mm -hmm. about Pokemon and their DLC for for thirty bucks, and they're complaining about that expansion pass is not good. I said, first of all, you guys gotta understand, they gave you a complete game. Yeah, you got a complete game for sixty bucks. They're saying for literally um for, for 30 bucks you get 200 more pokemon for free actually the 200 pokemon are, are free but mm -hmm. the story content and the extra content outside of the pokemon you got to pay 30 bucks for that and i'm like what's the problem most yeah. of you are don't care about that so most of you just care about having more pokemon so what are you up and complaining uh, complaining about and i just got to the point Gamers are weird, weird these days. Some people talk about, you know, being able to be successful and everything online. Don't get me wrong, online success is a wonderful thing. But for me personally, I want to have online success and I also want to be successful in other areas of my life that don't require me to turn on this camera or require me to have internet. It's like yeah. you were saying during your campfire the other night, is having a skill set of things. Ooh. Do things. Yeah, I was paying attention. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. I tuned in. I was, I was there. I was like, oh, I said, Mikel was speaking my language. It's like having a skill set, understanding the things you have. That's a skill set, and to add to what you're saying, understanding which of your skill sets goes in line towards your piece. Because just because you're really good at something doesn't mean that you're called to do it. That's something that yeah. I feel like a lot of people don't want to realize. You can be really good at it, but is this bringing you happiness? There are yeah. people who are really good at making money, six, seven figures, most unhappy people you ever meet. Mm -hmm. So going back to video games for myself, I just don't want to stream sometimes. There'll be, there'll be days where I'm like, I don't feel like entertaining people. It's like someone asked me, can I stream after the chill cast? And the best analogy I can give is like, when I stream, that's like in me inviting you over to my house to come hang out with me, right? Yeah. So if I invite, if I invite you guys to come hang over, hang over my house, right? Mm -hmm. You guys chill with me for about two hours, and then we we you know dab up and say, all right, catch you on the catch you on the next one, catch you on the flip. Some other friends call say, hey, can we come over? And I'm just inviting the same people back three hours later or an hour later just to come back over. That's the mentality I have of doing like two streams in one day. It's like, I just saw you guys. <laughs> yeah, no, dude, that's that's why I'm at too. Cause like I've been doing two streams a day, like on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And I'm at a point now where I'm like, I, I was telling my wife, I'm like, yo, this is not funny anymore. I feel like this is taking over. And that's why like yesterday when I did Resident Evil 3 and I just, I just played straight through the game, start to finish. And I'm like, this is the one stream because why am I going to divide that twice when, I mean, it makes sense if I play like four hours, I'm tired. Okay. We'll come back and do it another time. Mm -hmm. But 
twice in one day. I'm just at a point now where I'm like, nah, I don't want to do that anymore. I I totally get you. I totally get you. But um, I want to ask you one last question. And I ask everybody this who's on the podcast because everyone's going to have different answers every time. And I feel it's always valuable. Okay. To those who are out there who are content creators, mm-hmm. or to those who consider themselves YouTubers, rising entrepreneurs, uh, future business owners, future brand, future people who are creating their own brand, what is your advice to- towards them? Especially since you are in a position where you can say you're in a successful position where you are actually living off your craft. What is your advice to those people? Uh, it's going to be multi-layered. Um, but I'm gonna keep short and cons- keep it short and concise. Um, no, no, no. Give give give, give them to me. Give give them to me. Give, give, give. <laughs> fill, fill them up. Fill them up. All right. So my advice to you guys, if you're you know, content creator, creative entrepreneur, whatever it is that you're trying to do, one, as Zach Fair said, Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core, embrace your dreams. That's number one. Brace your dreams. I got it on my business card. Smart man. Embrace your dreams. Know what you want to do. And the easiest way, my dad used to tell me this all the time. The easiest way to know what you want to do is to figure out what you don't want to do. Because it makes you narrow it down. And when you figure out what it is you want to do, figure out not how you can compete with other people how you can be successful in it and if that means learning seo analytics you know how to market you got to do that to get yourself out there because it doesn't make any sense to have a phenomenal like think of it this way you just made the best steak asparagus green i'll make my mashed mashed potatoes mashed potatoes salad making myself hungry because it's what I'm about to have for dinner. But what is the point you making this five star meal, five course meal, five star meal, and nobody is around to enjoy it. You need to learn your craft. What are you going to do? Get good at it. Be the best you that you can be. Develop the skill set. Because going into YouTube as a creator, a lot of us didn't know how to do the stuff we're doing now. Mm -hmm. You teach yourself how to use video editing software, how to use photo editing software, how either you're going to have a mixer in your face, you're going to use certain types of mics, USB, XLR. You teach yourself a lot of skills that a lot of people don't realize it can go beyond what you're doing now. But build that foundation because it's imperative once you've built the foundation you want to build upon it you want to learn how to market and for a lot of people marketing can be as simple as how you present yourself on social media um and i'm not saying censor yourself there's some things you shouldn't talk about you don't want people's perceptions of you especially like you don't if you want to work with the game industry and i tell a lot of creators this and a lot of them don't get it the gaming industry is enormous but the people who run it that very small. is very small so if you are a youtuber or a creator and you are tagging a company and bad mouthing them or tagging a person who works for that company. They know. And you just blacklisted yourself. And you have to be very careful with how you present yourself because presenting yourself online is just like you would present yourself in person. Be very, very, very careful with that because the wrong thing can blacklist you across the board because you, 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 Pardon my language. Off one person. Everybody knows. Everyone knows. And the other bit of advice aside from marketing, developing your brand, and having a foundation and skill set, 
do what makes you happy if like i'm a fan of this this guy nitro rad he covers old games you know silent hill siren he covers games that he enjoys nothing trending nothing current there's this misconception that you only have to cover you know be it games movies whatever cover what's trending the thing the problem with what's trending of whatever is trending is here and gone like that if you want to cover uh, let's say you want to cover f0 gx cover it but make it something make content you would like to see so if you want to go all out you know balls to the wall bells and whistles and make it a show and you've got the energy and enthusiasm and the creativity and people can feel that that's infectious because people come and and avidan and i have learned this people come for you what you put out there your content because they love you they enjoy you they will enjoy your content but if you're making soulless content just for numbers you putting you you're doing you know what is it we talked about reactions at one point you're doing reaction videos or you're doing streams or you're only playing something because within the time frame that's relevant yeah you can get the views but you don't have the people that are going to stay around. It, it, it's it's a thing about you want to generate lasting relationships, which is why if you go into a store, if you work if, for anyone who's worked retail, they'll tell you one of the selling thing, the things you got to do is you got to build that relationship with the customer because if they, you build a relationship, they'll come back. It's it's the brand loyalty. People who just come in and watch. Oh, yeah, it's cool. Okay, click off. I'm done. Or you build a relationship. People come back. I mean, I'd be interested in this, but I like him. I want to hear what he has to say. I want to see what he's going to do. I want to interact. I want to feel that tangible relationship. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people miss this mark. So my advice to you guys amongst all of it, put it all together Brace your dreams, one. Learn skill set. Build a solid foundation. Build on that foundation. Make content you enjoy. And market and brand yourself. That is a, that could be a whole video, dog. But you just <laughs> did right there. That is some of this content right there. Like, you can make that into a whole video, man. But um, I, I'm glad you even said that. It's like... I it's something you said about you can't you gotta market yourself correctly. I did a short, you know, I do short segments of Beast for Breakfast Breakfast on the go. Um, mm. You guys um, probably saw this episode already. If you haven't, go check it out. But um, please, <laughs> 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 I I'm just being polite. But nah, I'm just uh, people guys. people make sure you uh, you like, you share, you comment, you subscribe, and uh, follow him on all social media. You know, but. I commented on that. That was one of the points. I said how to dominate your social media brand. And one of the things I said was um, understanding that you can't say anything that you want because people come to you because of your brand, what's associated with your brand, what they perceive your brand to be. So if people see something that's contrary to your brand and not what they signed up for, they're going to leave. Then yeah. most people... They, they, there's a perception associated with you that they signed up for. And it's not your full personality. It's a part of your personality they signed up for, but it's, it's almost never your full personality what they signed up for. And some people may stay for your full personality, but the reason why some people leave is because it's a side of you they liked. Um, for instance, I gave an example of you got to be careful on social media. Look at Nintendo. Nintendo tweets their products and their stuff. JCPenney does the same thing. Lowe's does the same thing. Netflix, they do the same thing, but they do something a little bit more creative and they retweet other people having fun with their content. They embrace other people enjoying their content so it's more community-based. You have to establish a foundation of what your branding is going to be. 
but we're not going to get too much into it. If you want more on that, uh, Mikkel has talked about that in his podcast. So make sure you are subscribed to his channel and his podcast, not only on YouTube, but if you see on his page, he is everywhere. He is on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Anchor. Am I missing anything? No, you doing better than I do. I trip up on it. <laughs> I'm like, where am I at? <laughs> so make sure you guys are subscribed to him on whatever platform you uh, you you feel like you are going to listen to his content because he he does a fantastic job. So thank you guys for watching this episode of Beast for Breakfast. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. And most of all, most of all, you make sure. Yes, you. Make sure you share this with a friend. This is Avedon and Mikel Casanova, and we are out. Peace. So it's one of the things that, uh, you know, Avedon and I have been talking about uh, prior to this this episode is just the importance of you know the different platforms that are out for ind- independent creators you know the independent musicians podcasters or whatever and it's something that you know from our time when we were younger in our 20s early 20s and teens it wasn't there it wasn't there if you were if you want to you know, listen to a musician unless you were like burning stuff on a CD or a cassette tape. Yeah, I'm showing my age. Um, that was the biggest distribution and it was primarily going to be in the area where you live. Now we've got the capability of if you are an artist, like a musician, like our friend uh, Studio Nintendo, you can put stuff out on, on Spotify. You can put stuff out on I uh, iHeartRadio. Um, Pandora, because these places are seeing, and, and, and the one that started all this was SoundCloud. Yep. It, it, it was the OG, and it's just, it's gotten to a point where you don't need a record label, you don't need to sign to an MCN, you don't need to sign to really anyone. You can be everything in one. You can make the content, and you can distribute it out there without having to have a third party other than where you're publishing it at so this is how a lot of people i mean justin bieber he got discovered from what youtube yep so it's it's like even youtube is one so the the thing that i want you guys to really like take away from that actually both of us want you to take away from it yeah is how the tools for you to succeed are often right here they're right there they're right at your fingertips i tell people all the time your cell phone is worth a five-figure business startup in the 90s Mm -hmm. yes yes your cell phone is worth a five-figure business startup in the 90s like what a lot of people grew up in the 90s it's like you had to use radio stations or you had to use another medium to get discovered like Excuse me. There was a whole bunch of gatekeeping back then where mm-hmm. you had no choice. The fact that the internet blew up the way it did, I feel, and you know, shout out to Dave Drake. He talks about this a lot, but um, there's a lot of people under there. There's a whole bunch of people. There's a lot of people. Not even just Dave Drake. There's a lot of my friends who talk about that actually. Where underpowering our use of our cell phones. We're underpowering our use of social media. We're underpowering our use to just get noticed more. And I feel we could do a lot better Mm -hmm. in that department. The only thing is, the only thing is I feel like when we do use these other platforms, Mm -hmm. a lot of us just be very honest and I'll include myself in this so I ain't coming at nobody. A lot of us are lazy in our approach to use these things to their full potential. It's almost like we look at the work. (laughs) We look at the work that goes into it. We're like, "Eh, I don't want to do that, but we'll scroll 
for about a 20 minutes, 30 minutes, where we can use that same 20 minutes and 30 minutes into learning how I can use this. Like we would scroll 20 and 30 minutes on Twitter or on Facebook, seeing other people's business, but we won't watch a 20, 30 minute video on how to effectively use that platform. Yeah. That's the disconnect. So you're right. It's like we do have these different things, these other distributions, especially for creative entrepreneurs and content creators like ourselves. But the problem is a lot of us don't want to seek the education because this kind of goes into more in the realms of psychology and on how we are trained as, as adults or trained to, to be adults. We are trained that studying is for school we are trained working is monday through friday that has been implemented in us from killing as, as kids from having a monday through friday schedule working yeah. eight hours eight or nine hours a day at school and you transition and do the same thing in college you transition and do the same thing for work so you have a system created where's my tinfoil hat so you can put call <laughs> I should. I should. I'm, I'm a light bulb. <laughs> I I should. I should tinfoil my my beanie and put this on when I start getting getting in this realm. But you have a system created to make more workers than yeah. actual producers, and that's how that's how that works. And you got to understand where you are. Not not just not to knock people who want to work. If you want to work and be a worker, fine. That's what your creative process that's where you desire great but don't come at people who want to be producers and who want to be masters of their time who want to wake up and just at wake up at 10 o'clock in, in the in in the morning or no it no i'm gonna rephrase that because i find more people who are successful wake up at seven and in the early hours of the day even for myself i want to get to that don't get mad at the people who wake up before you and go to sleep probably after you some, in some cases yeah or wake up or they go to bed you laugh at them for going to bed at nine to ten o'clock at night but yet they're up in the morning getting things done and they could work on their own time there's yeah. there's a lot of freedom that comes with there's a lot more freedom in the industry now but there's more restraining on ourselves it's almost like the it's a cre. It's a wow. That is slavery when I think about it. Like these are thoughts that are coming off the top of my head. It's it's, it's, it's real slavery when you think about it. It's Stockholm syndrome when you think about it because the chains have been let loose, mm -hmm. right? But the restraint is still there. Yeah. Like we are still restraining ourselves from fully opening our wings and soaring higher than we ever have. But it's like oh, I can't do this. It's from, I can't do this, turn into, I don't want to do this. Yeah. And that is a very scary place to be in. So to bring that to the Spotify, a lot of people, we went from not being able to do this to, uh, I don't want to do this. And yeah. sadly to say, we've been up in our age a lot, this whole conversation, but I'm going to say something very real is most people our age who don't want to do the extra work. And a lot of people younger than us who are out the gate successful because mm -hmm. that's, that's their normal. That's what they want to do. They train their minds from jump to say, this is what it takes to be successful. It takes more work to talk someone out of who's older out of their ways than it is to train a child. Yeah. Very true.